The first night on the job at Greenway's promised nothing out of the ordinary, just a routine shift that my friend Stuart and I hoped would pass quickly with banter and the occasional restocking. The store, with its sprawling aisles filled with everything from fresh produce to canned goods, gleamed under the fluorescent lights. Our laughter echoed through the empty store, filling it with life, as we made light of the typical graveyard shift stories. Ghostly customers checking out at midnight, Stuart joked, pushing a cart along. I laughed, playing along with tales of spectral cashiers. The first sign that the night wouldn't be as mundane as we'd hoped was the cold draft that swept through aisle five, chilling us to the bone. We exchanged puzzled looks, scanning the closet doors and windows for any sign of a breach, finding none. An uneasy silence fell between us, broken only by the faint directionless whispering that seemed to emanate from the very shelves we were stocking. The sound was barely there like the sigh of a distant wind, but unmistakably present. It was unsettling how quickly our laughter died, replaced by a growing sense of dread. Someone was there, so we split up, walkie-talkies in hand. Stuart ventured into the back storerooms while I took to the aisles. The plan was simple, check for any signs of a break-in or perhaps a faulty HVAC system. Anything to explain the draft and the whispers. No sooner had I had taken a few steps into the first aisle, a can of soup tumbled off the shelf behind me, followed by a box of cereal, then another, and another. I spun around, half expecting to catch a glimpse of some prankster, but there was only emptiness. My heart raced. It was then Stuart's scream pierced the night, a raw, agonizing sound that cut through the walkie-talkie. Stuart! I shouted into the device. Talk to me, man! But there was no reply, just the crackle of static. Panic set in as I raced towards the storerooms. Finding Stuart's walkie-talkie abandoned on the cold tile was a moment of pure horror. My calls for him went unanswered as well. It must have taken me 15 minutes before I spotted Stuart at the end of an aisle. Relief flooded through me. I called his name, but he didn't respond. I walked up to him, but he didn't seem to be looking at me. It was when I touched him that his face turned, but he seemed numb, unable to hear me. I must have turned for just a moment, but when I looked back, he seemed to have vanished into thin air. My heart was a drumbeat of terror as I stood frozen. I just turned and sprinted towards the security office. But as I entered inside, I saw Stuart, calm as if nothing had happened, munching on a donut. I asked him about the screaming and the disappearance, but he seemed oblivious. I took her around and came back here. I never ran into you. Impossible. But when he produced his walkie-talkie, I froze. Then whom did I see? Before I could grapple further with the impossibility of the situation, the entire store plunged into darkness. The security monitors flickered with static before coming back to life. A shriek, bone chilling in its intensity, filled the air, its source untraceable yet ominously close. Our eyes were drawn to the monitors, where a shadowy figure moved with purpose through the aisles, its form beast-like. Panic surged as the realization hit us. The entity, the source of the night's horrors, was real, and it was coming for us. The figure on the screen seemed to defy the laws of physics, its movements jerky and unnatural, as if it were a creature of another realm forced into our reality. We watched, transfixed in horror as it drew closer, the cameras nearest us flickering out one by one. We ran and it chased us. Its form was a swirling vortex of shadows. The store transformed into a labyrinth of terror, each turn and aisle a potential trap as we fled the relentless pursuit of the enraged spirit. That is when Gerald, the security guard, appeared out of nowhere, clutching an ancient silver talisman. With a strength and resolve that belied his age, he confronted the entity, the talisman growing brightly in his hand. 
the light seemed to repel the darkness, creating a barrier that the entity couldn't cross. Seizing the opportunity, Gerald ushered us toward the exit. Once outside, under the safety of the night sky, Gerald shared the grim tale of the land upon which Greenway stood. A cemetery, centuries old, had been disturbed during the store's construction, its graves desecrated, the resulting place of countless souls upturned. Among them was a spirit, powerful and vengeful, awakened by the violation of its grave, now seeking retribution against the living. The realization that our night of horror was rooted in a history of disrespect and desecration was a weighty one. The store, its gleaming aisles and modern facade, could not erase the sanctity of the ground it occupied. Gerald's intervention had saved us, but the knowledge that many spirits still lingered, bound to the sight of their unrest, was a haunting thought that would linger far longer. As dawn broke, painting the sky with streaks of light, Stuart and I watched the store from a distance, its windows now just mirrors reflecting the morning sun. The horrors of the night were over, but the experienced had changed us, a stark reminder of the past's enduring presence and the unseen worlds that brush against our town. In the end, Greenways remained a beacon in the community. But for Stuart and me, it was a monument to the unseen, and a reminder that some things, once disturbed, demanded to be acknowledged, their stories heard and respected. Our night shift at Greenways was over, but the echoes of the past would whisper through its aisles long after we were gone. I went shopping one quiet night last year. It was later at night, but my local grocery store was still open, and they're always open pretty late. I think it was about 11 p.m., and what I liked about shopping at that time was how quiet things were. On that night in particular, I saw a couple of other shoppers, but not many at all. The store was rather large, and had just about any kind of groceries you could want. I started out near the produce, and then started going down one aisle after another with my cart. There were a lot of things that I needed to get but with the store being nearly empty, I was able to shop rather fast. I had gotten to one of the middle aisles in the store, and I don't remember exactly what was in it, but I had been shopping for probably 20 minutes and was getting close to being done. I was the only person in that aisle, and the store was quiet. Just a soft volume of music played across the store speakers. Out of nowhere, I heard a loud crash from the next aisle over from mine. I decided to walk over and check out what happened out of curiosity. It had sounded like a bunch of things falling off the shelf. I left my cart there where it was and walked over to the next aisle over. When I got there, I first noticed somebody sprinting out of the aisle at the other end. They then went out of sight within a second and I only saw the back side of them, but it appeared to be a man. Then I saw the damage that he had caused. A bunch of items laid across the aisle on the ground. It was like somebody had pushed them all onto the floor. Whoever had done it was gone so I took it upon myself to put the items back on the shelf. It didn't take too long, maybe two or three minutes. There was probably about 15 items or so that had been knocked over. This had been a pretty strange thing, but when I was done, I just returned to my cart in the next aisle over. Then I continued my shopping. Like I said, I was close to being done, and I just had to get a few things from the dairy department. I made my way over there, seeing only one other customer along the way. When I arrived at the dairy, I was getting yogurt and noticed another customer. It was a man, wearing jeans and a gray shirt. He was standing around in the far back corner of the store. I didn't pay much attention and kept on what I was doing. But then, something crazy happened. I saw the man moving towards this display that the store had of a drink product. The guy walked right over to it and then shoved the display, causing it to fall over. All of the cans of the drink fell down, and it caused another loud noise. Drinks went everywhere but luckily, none of them broke open or spilled. I found this to be really strange, and also realized that this was probably the same man who had caused the other mess in the other aisle. I figured it would be a good idea to stay away from him. After the man knocked the display over, he walked at a fast pace in another direction. I finished up getting the last few items that I was going to get, and in that time, I saw an employee of the store walk over and see the mess. He saw me as the only other customer in the area and asked me if I saw what had happened. I told him the story and mentioned the incident in the other aisle as well. 
the employee shook his head and then walked over to go clean things up. I went into another direction to go check out. I got to the empty checkout lane at one of the three check lanes still open in the store. Soon I had paid for everything and was on my way. I left the store and headed to my car in the quiet parking lot. When I had made it fairly close to my vehicle, I started to hear footsteps behind me. They were moving at a faster pace, so I turned around to see, and when I did, I saw the same guy who had knocked over all the stuff inside the store. He was walking aggressively in my direction. It seemed as though he wanted something with me, but I didn't know what. I kept walking to my car, but there was no way I was going to make it before he got to me. When I had just about reached the back side of my car, the footsteps were right there, so I stopped and turned around. Now I was face to face with the man. He stopped and stood there across from me, the only thing between us being my shopping cart. I said hi to the man, not knowing what else to do. The guy responded by demanding the keys to my car. He told me that he needed them. This really surprised me and I told the guy no. The guy then reached forward and grabbed my shopping cart from the sides. He then proceeded to knock the shopping cart over, spilling all of the grocery bags onto the pavement. As the cart fell over, I turned and ran for the front door of my car. The man had actually created a bit of an obstacle for himself. I pushed the unlock button on the keys of my car only when I was right outside of the driver's door. Then I opened the door and hopped in. I locked it immediately after. The man got there just seconds later and tried opening my door. He then started aggressively banging on the window. I started the engine and backed out as fast as possible. I actually backed into my shopping cart which was laying on the ground still. Then I sped away, leaving the man standing there. When I was out of the parking lot and on the road, I called the police. I reported the whole incident and let them know that the man was still in the parking lot. Unfortunately, all of my groceries were left at the store. There was no way I was going back there and I had to go shopping again the next day. At the end of the day though, I'm just happy that the man didn't catch me. I used to live in Southern California in the Los Angeles area. I moved about a year ago but still live in the general area. Over here, there's a popular grocery store chain called Ralph's. The stores aren't that big but are pretty nice and generally clean and organized. That was always my main place to go shopping and get groceries and I went there more times than I can count. I'm a female and during my time in LA, I lived in a house that I rented with my roommate Jenna. I met her shortly after moving to LA and we became good friends. We decided to rent a house together and it was a two bedroom place where obviously I had one bedroom and she had the other. I had been out one day and stopped at Ralph's on the way home to get groceries. It had been a while since I had gotten them and I was running low on many things. It was probably about 7 p.m. or so, maybe 8, I really don't remember. So when I got inside the store, it was kind of busy like this particular location always seemed to be. I got a shopping cart and began getting everything on my list I had made on my phone. When I shop, I'm usually really focused and I don't really look around at the other people. So I had shopped through the store for maybe 20 or 30 minutes and was sort of near the end of it when a woman approached me. She said, excuse me, and I looked up at her. I had no clue what she could possibly want. She focused her eyes a ways away and asked me if I knew that man over there. I had no clue what she was talking about. I looked over at the man in question. There was this guy standing a pretty far ways away, kind of looking at items at the end of an aisle. He was wearing a black t-shirt and a black hat. I had never seen the man before that I was aware of. No, I told the woman, I don't know who he is. The woman's response sent a chill down my spine. Well, I could be wrong, but he seems to be following you all around the store, she continued. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I thought I would let you know. She went on to say that she saw him follow me from one aisle to another and it just seemed weird. She later saw him trailing me again in another section of the store. I told the woman thanks for letting me know and I would watch out for him. I was almost done shopping anyways. The woman was really nice and even asked if I wanted her to go talk to the man and ask him what he was doing. I told her that that wouldn't be necessary and I was confident that it wouldn't be a problem. I decided to get the last few items and then leave. The store was still pretty busy, so overall I didn't feel like I was in any danger. I went over to the final aisle that I needed to go in to complete my shopping list. When I was in that aisle, only one other person was at the other end. I spent about a minute there and just as I put an item in my cart, I saw somebody enter the aisle from the other side. It was the guy in the black hat. He very briefly looked at me and then started examining something on the shelves facing away from me. 
He carried a shopping basket with a few random items in it. I felt like maybe he actually was following me all around, and I possibly should have took the woman up on her offer to question him. I quickly pushed my cart to the end of the aisle and towards the check lanes. When I got out of the aisle, I looked behind me, but didn't immediately see the man. I got in line to check out and waited for a few minutes. I kept looking around the whole time, now really aware of my surroundings. When I was putting my items on the conveyor belt, I noticed the guy again. There were a couple of people now behind me in line, and he got into the back of the line. I tried to keep an eye on him, making sure I knew where he was. My items were scanned by the employee and put into bags. As this was going on, I saw the man suddenly leave the line and walk away. I was happy to see this and didn't really pay attention to where exactly he was going to. I thought maybe he saw a line that was shorter or something. Either way, it made me feel better knowing he was moving away from me. Soon, I paid for my groceries and put the bags in my cart, then I left. I walked out of the store and into the parking lot. Now that I was outside of the store, I was extra careful. I was afraid the guy would be out in the parking lot waiting for me or something, but I didn't see him. I carefully made my way to my car and loaded up the groceries in the back. Then I got inside, started my engine, and drove off. I felt relieved to be out of there and that I hadn't seen the man. I wondered who he was and why he had been following me. I believed the woman that the guy had in fact been following me around the store. When he went down that last aisle and then got in line behind me, it confirmed it. Either way, everything was fine now. I drove home, getting there probably 20 minutes later. When I got home, my roommate Jenna was back as well for the day. I cooked some food for myself as Jenna had already made something and was eating. Then I went into my bedroom to eat, relax, and watch a show. My door was open, and probably 20 minutes later, Jenna was in my doorway. She said that there was a car parked out front that seemed weird. She asked me if I was expecting anyone. I got up and told her no. My heart then started racing, remembering the man who had seemingly followed me around Ralph's. I quickly told Jenna about it. She said that she noticed a car running and parked on the side of the road right in front of our house. We both went over to the window to check. The car was still there. The headlights were on, and we could sort of see somebody inside of it, but couldn't make out any details. For the next several minutes, we kept an eye on it. Nothing changed, though. The person didn't get out or drive away. We decided to just forget about it. It had to be just a coincidence or something. I returned to my bedroom as Jenna was hanging out in the living room. I told her to let me know if the car left. Probably 10 minutes went by, and I heard Jenna running over to my room suddenly. When she arrived at my doorway, she told me that she heard somebody get out of the car. We both walked over to the window to look out. Before we got there, though, there was a knock on the front door. He was now right there on the step. We both very carefully went to the front window to look out. We were extremely careful not to be seen by him and barely lifted up parts of the blinds. I saw the same guy from Ralph's and it was definitely him. He was wearing the same black shirt, but now he didn't have on his black hat and was wearing a different one. It was a Domino's pizza hat. The guy was also holding one of those pizza bags. We were not going to answer the door and after a few moments, he knocked again. This time, he said something. Pizza delivery. We couldn't believe this guy was trying to pose as a pizza delivery driver. We looked out to his car. It was older looking and didn't have a Domino's thing on top of it or anything. The guy was definitely trying to trick us. He then spoke again. Someone ordered a pizza to this house. They paid for it. I'm just trying to deliver it. Is anybody home? He seemed desperate to try to get inside the house, but we weren't going to fall for it. We both kept silent and just hoped that the man wouldn't try to break his way in. He stood there, quiet, for about a minute. Then, to both of our surprise, he actually tried opening the front door. It was locked, obviously, and he couldn't get in. The man then began walking away, back towards his car. We both breathed a sigh of relief when we saw this. We watched him put the pizza bag in his front passenger seat, and we thought he would then get in and drive away. But he didn't. He started walking back up through the front yard towards the house. Both of our hearts sank. What was he doing now? The man did not walk to the front door this time, though, but to the side of the house. Jenna and I started to panic. We wondered what we should do, if we should call the police or something. About a minute went by, and we heard our back doorknob turning. The man was trying to get in through the back door. That was the only other entrance to the house. Thankfully, it was also locked. Then, about another minute later, we watched him return into view in the front yard. The guy then walked back to his car again. This time, he finally got in the driver's seat. 
We kept watching, and we didn't take our eyes off the car until it drove away. That was a huge relief to see. We just hoped that he wouldn't come back, and thankfully, he didn't. We both could not believe that he'd actually tried entering our house multiple times. Knocking on the door and posing as a pizza delivery driver was bad enough, but trying to open the door was insane. At least he hadn't tried breaking in. After that, I never saw the man again.